So let me get. Okay, folks, um, One, we're two. getting started here on the last session of this uh, year's engineering workshop in the storage track. And we have Asgar mm -hmm. Yahi from uh, Red Hat, and yeah. he's going to talk about open drive test. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thanks. I know it's the last session, and everybody's, you know, waiting to get back home, but thanks a lot for attending anyway. Um, my name is Oscar Riahi. I'm a senior solutions architect with uh, Red Hat. Prior to that, I was working with Seagate. I was the first uh, OCP storage chairman that was elected in 2013, and now this nice young man <laughs> took the <laughs> responsibility. So today I'm going to talk about um, Open Drive test. Why? Because it, it matches actually very good, very well with the previous presentation. And what I will talk about is how the drives today tested, um, why open drive test, why I think that's a good idea to do that, and who are the players and call to action. So, how are the drives tested today? Any vendors, drive vendors in here right now? Can you say, is that, can you say how the drives are tested? Is that true? No? Any customer, <laughs> drive customers? Okay, so, so every customer, the hyperscalers, CSPs, etc., who get drives does their own testing. That's what we know for sure. And let's say uh, a quart quarterly they pay about something between 10 to $20 million for just testing the drives. Anybody disagree? No? Yes? OK. So if, <laughs> if we just get the example of five cloud service providers, one, five of these big guys, then they are spending together about $75 million quarterly and about $300 million yearly just to test the drives. Beside that, spending time, a lot of time that you have, you know, limited time with your staff, you're spending on, on, on drive testing. Total cost of ownership, it adds up because you have three months that your staff are doing a lot of tests um, now, the question is, is it feasible to share the best practices for testing? Which is a question from me, actually, for the discussion. And is it possible to delay in time to market of their apps to, or services? So this last point actually makes your time to market um, from the customer side delayed because you have to test your drives before you, uh, before you uh, deploy your software on it, right? I think I turned off the projector. Which one? Hmm? No, that's turned off. Or maybe I didn't do it, maybe somebody, oh, here you go. What? Ah. That was a signal that I should move faster. <laughs> So these are the questions, and maybe some of them are true, some of them up for, for discussion. Again, this presentation is just a start for a workshop, for a discussion between the customers and drive vendors and, and see what we can do if we can bring these people together. So why open drive test? Uh, open drive test because it's cost saving. Customers can share their best practices with each other who are testing as far as it's not proprietary. Uh, it could be a guideline. It's not going to be a, like a must do, but the document coming out of this practice, this project would be a, a guideline, a best, uh, you know, to the, to the entire community. It will focus, as I said, on the common criteria on the tests, and one of the advantages of it is prediction models, because once you have all these common tests, 
done with the same methodology, with the same, let's say, according to this document that later on will be uh, created, then you can gather a lot of data that you can analyze and use for further prediction models, etc. cetera. Um, you can do early quality exertion. That's also important, I think, for customers because then you have this chance of all vendors' drives to be tested with the same uh, test scopes and you find basically the, the errors or any problem with that much earlier. Uh, option of extra long life test, because it's standardized, you can maybe run other tests that you usually wouldn't run on your environment, your own environment, because you want to get the drives faster to the market, into your systems. Um, and hence, you know, the, you want to just do what is necessary to make sure that the drive in your environment works fine. Um, of course, for this purpose, would be great to be on a standard open source platform, such as OCP gear, right? You can, you can say, okay, we run all the tests on all drives from all the vendors on the same system. It's very basic and vanilla test. So, but there are some considerations. How the end users would be confident to, to share their best practices with you or with whoever is working on that? The people who buy the drives, how many they buy, those are numbers that customers are not very happy to basically open, openly talk about. So that's the question, how to, appro oops, sorry, how to approach that. Um, now, testing would be the final test or just a generic testing in a standardized enclosure. Uh, is it burning versus short integration test? Burning meaning you, you are testing the drives in the final place that it will be rested there, or you are just testing it uh, somewhere different than the place that it will be used. So that means it adds a chance of uh, risk of damage during the transportation after your test. Um, new integration failures at customers. So very, that actually, because when you test, and we will see my, num my numbers, um, that actually should be very low, because once you have a set of tests that is common and you do it for everybody, then when the drives arrive at each customer site, of course they have proprietary tests, proprietary application, that they want to test the drive specifically for that workload. And they still can do that. that they will not open source that, they will not talk about that with anybody. Uh, so that's understandable. Um, or, this is another question, uh, testing with unique cust customer unique firmware. Some customers have their own unique firmware on the drives. They want specific, specific firmware to be loaded. Um, that needs to be answered. <laughs> Agreeing on the workload temperature, all these uh, variables that you're testing, your, your, the hard drive. Uh, Again, uh, is this a prelim or test or final test? We talked about that. Uh, long life test and uh, open co compute uh, enclosure, we talked about that. So test location should be somewhere very cheap, energy available. You wouldn't do it, for instance, if you want to do it somewhere, you wouldn't do it in California, for instance, where the power is very expensive. You should. This document or this working group should, if, they dis if we decide to do that, work on both, testing SSDs and HDDs. Uh, it, the test time varies, of course, but the failure rate uh, redu uh, reduction goal is 
if we get, if we assume that is the in-house testing, let's say this is our entire from begin to end test phase, right? When we do that in-house, then I think uh, I would argue that 70 to 80 percent of these tests between all these CSPs and hyperscalers are the same. And then the, that leaves only the proprietary part that the, that the uh, customers need to do at their own site because of their you know, specific requirements or whatever uh, is that they won't share their testing or um, their application is proprietary, their workload is proprietary. And again, I put this again in the back end, end user confidentially, because that's one of the main questions to answer. It, I started with this, and I ended this list with, with this question, because um, that's the main thing, that everybody should really feel conf confident to work with this working group, and I think the best place would be something in OCP, that people get together, and start, test, start talking about how do we want to share these test best practices so that it's available to everybody. That's the key. <clears throat> now, the players in my mind are, and it is not a complete list, but I think in order to do this, we need the hyperscalers, of course, to, to want to play in this game. We need the drive vendors, but drive vendors usually uh, follow the customer. So if a lot of customers say, yeah, we want to do that this way, then there's a big chance that uh, drive vendors will play as well. Uh, test labs, like SNEA has a test lab, I think, uh, a lot of other places, because where you want to start the testing. Um, uh, OMEs, HP of the world, uh, you know, Dell of the world, those guys who are making systems as well, because they are testing as well, maybe basically the enterprise level customers, but maybe not as much as uh, Google and Facebook and so on, but they, they are still cons consuming a lot of, uh, that's a nice ring. And of course, OCP and SNEA are the players because that's the community where people get together. And I put who else, because there might be some other players that I am not aware of. So this is basically the foundation of this discussion. Remember, this is a discussion rather than a, a presentation, that one, hence that's a workshop. So with this, I just want to start this uh, idea in the group to see how we can tackle this approach. I believe for the and customers, it makes a diff big difference, millions of dollars difference, when the tests are basically standardized at a certain level that they, it covers 70 to 80% of their tests. They don't need to do all of them the same test over and over again in their own facilities. They just need to do what, what is unique to their environment. So um, I think we, we need to start a project focusing on this. If, if everybody's uh, interested, or some people are interested from customer side, from vendor side, and uh, you know, then start a document. That's the first step that you start a best practices document. How would you suggest a generic test document would look like? Which tests are the same around all the consumers, customers who are using the same uh, disk drives or SSDs. That would be the first step. And then, of course, there would be more and more ideas coming in about you know, all the tests that maybe even the vendors can chime in and say, OK, we can do these tests as well. Why we should do it for every single customer, maybe we can do these as well in the same place or with the same uh, approach. So, that was it. Any question? Yeah. Just, you mentioned, mentioned sharing uh, best practices for tests. Do you envision in, um, in a situation where we could also share test infrastructure so that uh, 
tests produced by, by one member could be shared to another member with minimal Well, risk. it depends. That was the main question that I put twice there. Because vendors might say, I don't want my competition to know how my, how my drive behaves under your test, right? Because that brings the, you know, they, these guys make drives, the other guys make drives, and each of them are eager to see how their equivalent drive, you know, performs. Mm -hmm. And then that's the question, do they want to share it with each other or not? That's why I think uh, an NDA or something like that is needed between whoever is doing the tests and the vendors or, or the uh, customers. But if, if it does, it would be great. I guess what I was meaning is uh, more of a open source framework to perform execution on tests. Oh, yeah. So absolutely. the individual tests could be, could be shared, not necessarily their results. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's the idea, actually. Yeah. Uh, so Tom Coughlin. Um, so uh, as you point out at the beginning, mm -hmm. as the drives get larger, that back end test that they do in the factories you know, becomes a bigger factor. Yeah. So if you want to use, um, and, and, and also, uh, you know, when you're using a whole bunch of drives together or buying them as a bunch, that's a lot different than buying a drive for an individual PC or yeah. server, that kind of thing. Is one of the objectives is to find ways that you can um, perhaps allow for possibilities for reducing the back end test requirements? that the vendors have to do, you know, when you're accepting a lot of drives versus, uh, you know, having to test every drive, like statistical testing, things mm -hmm. of that sort, you know, because there may be some opportunities there, yeah. you know, but then it gets into how then do you bracket to control potential failures and yeah. things that really could be a problem. So is that part of what you're trying to address? Uh, that's a very good question. And I think the answer to that should come from the group that get together, decide, uh, you know, in in which way we want to cooperate. Uh, because it is not a, a program introduction, it's a suggestion right now what I'm talking about. So everything on this idea can be you know, manipulated, changed, and advanced. So it's a good question, but I think I'm not the right person to answer that. I think the right person is the group that uh, is working on this project. Yeah. Hi, um so my question is, I think this is very exciting. Um, we, um, with respect to managing a data center and stuff, we see this problem happen a lot, where we deploy firmware, and then we see problems that just happen to be our specific unique use case that mm -hmm. happen to hit it. And, and we do spend a lot of time testing firmware and drives. Yeah. Um, but my question was, uh, why would you not come up with a way where you, the vendors already are doing a lot of testing. Why would you not come up with a way where we push more of these onto the vendor testing that already happens? Uh, because vendors are biased. I was a vendor myself for a while. So, and as a customer, customers, no matter how good you test your product, they want to test it themselves. They, they, because vendors are biased. Right. Um, but it's the vendor's interest to give us firmware because it's, it's in the end, it, it is- I agree. Fun. I'm not saying that the, I'm not saying that the customers are right. I'm not saying vendors are biased. Like, George is not biased at all. He's one of the best guys. <laughs> But is the, is the perception that the vendors are biased, hence, else why they spend quarterly like 10 to $20 million to test their drives? Right, so one of the, one of the aspects when we do that, where you, are, you, know, you do above and beyond what the vendor is doing is because you believe your use case is unique, your environments are yeah. unique and stuff. Um, and given that probably most of the cloud customers are getting their own unique firmware, then yeah. how does a common platform handle that? Because at the end, we're still getting our unique firmware with, yeah. um, which is, to some extent, some features that are not common features. Well, I think it's a good question. That, that falls under the proprietary test. But I think still without loading that firmware maybe, or even with that firmware, you still, there is still a, a lot of tests that are common from vibration, temperature, extensive read, extensive write, you know, all these things that never, nevertheless everybody does from Google, Facebook, everybody does these kind of workload tests, which are common. I think this should cover only that section. Anything else that is proprietary, unique to each customer, they, do, they should do it at their own, own facilities or own you know, uh, merit. All right, so, um, so today, do you have like a repository where you capture customer workloads and use cases? 
No, we no. don't. And uh, from your experience, are your customers not my readily um, um, prepared to provide you such details? Uh, that's a very good question, again, which goes back to a group, if it gets started, to talk to the customers and vendors and see if they want to share it. Because what I presented here is just an idea that I had, and I think it saves the, because the goal of communities like OCP is to optimize, right? I think that's one of the ways we can optimize the industry. Why spend and waste a lot of money and efforts of a lot of qualified people to do the same thing over and over and over again in the different customer sites. That's the idea behind that, you know? And you can shorten the time to market because, you know, you don't need to do all of these tests yourself. You just do uh, whatever 20, 30% of the tests that is unique to your environment. Any other questions? Everybody ready to depart? <laughs> yes, yes. And, yes. And I have few hats. Whoever runs first can grab. Yeah, red hats. Oh, red hats. Oh, red hats. Oh, red hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're kind of brainstorming on this. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It seems to me there's two types of tests that you, that you want to look at. One is going to be a design test, i.e., will it work in your environment per its design? But the other side, this is kind of where you get into the back-end testing. You know, can you do anything that mm -hmm. could allow, allow uh, the users and the, and the manufacturers to work in collaboration that could allow, um, since you're dealing with the statistical population of drives, reducing some of the costs of that back-end yeah. test? So there's two different parts. One yeah. is it, how will it work in my environment? How do I test that? Exactly. The other part is another opportunity which can provide new ways of testing drives in the factory and providing what, what will work for the customer. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, absolutely, I agree. Uh, cool. So, I mean, I think this is uh, introducing the idea and this is a proposal for a work stream within OCP. Yeah. So um, I think this is a, what, another item like the one we had a discussion just before this one where we would want to follow up in the next uh, you know, OCP storage project call and then figure out you know, if there's enough interest in the community to start working on this, in, yeah. in this work stream. I think we saw a lot of different questions of things that we could be doing. And in general, within OCP, we're looking for efficiencies. We're looking for things that scale. We look for things that address, you know, end user, data center, end user uh, needs. So if we feel like there's enough here and interest from, from the community in pursuing this, then we'll pick it up. Yeah. So this I is think uh, that's introducing. And those interested, make sure that you yeah. show up in the next call. Yeah, exactly. So you can go, you can just search OCP storage wiki. And then there you'll have you'll find the the, the time for the Just next call. Just for George, and then you, come, everything comes up. It, it, he, he, he built it all. <laughs> I just edit the information now on the tables. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the idea, yeah. That's the idea to you know, be active and think about this, optimize the industry, and uh, and imagine if everybody shares their best practices that they can share, it adds up to the better quality of the drives as well. All right, so Beer with that, we're um, closing the whole engineering yep. workshop, and thank let's you. thank Asgar. Thank you. <clears throat>